Welcome back, hobby maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and in this video, we're gonna unbox and build the new Tyranids Norn Emissary model, uh, and show you any gotchas and maybe how to make both models. I don't, I don't quite know yet, but I can tell there's a couple of things that uh, you can tell from this, uh, these claws and things that may not be duplicated because it looks like those claws are similar, but there might be an insert piece there, but I'm not quite sure yet. So this kit is $115 from Games Workshop upon release in uh, uh, September of 2023, which, you know, is kind of the new standard for pricing uh, from getting for larger models from Games Workshop. We saw it a lot with uh, some of the Horse Heresy stuff. And now we're seeing it with, you know, some of the larger models as they come out for uh, different factions. So let's get this open and take a look at uh, the sprues themselves and see what we can figure out as far as how to build this uh, for more than one figure, hopefully. So in the box, it's uh, one big sprue here and a halfsy sprue, which would be about the normal size. You know, if you snap these in half, this is a normal box, basically. You know, uh, like Primaris Marines come about like this for 60 bucks, give or take, right? Um, so that's kind of what we're working with material-wise here. And if you'll notice these, uh, these guard, these uh, sprue gate guards right here for these larger pieces, they put them on there so they don't you know, the things that go on top, like the other sprue parts, don't kind of crush it. And it gives a little strength in the box too, which is kind of nice to see. And there's uh, some really crazy slices here. But before we jump into the sprues, I think we need to look at the instructions here and see if there's a way that we can make both of these models. Because if you're going to pay the price, why not try to do the most with the model? So jumping right into this thing, let's see what it's all about. So there's the three sprues I showed you. There's your 100 millimeter base. And then here's the two different builds. And I really like how Games Workshop does this coloration. So you can kind of see which one you want to build and what parts and things might be different overall. From here, it looks like there's a cowl on the back, but it's kind of remains to be seen if this can be attached in between those or if you're going to have some other piece in here that will restrict you from doing both of these models. And I can already tell the claws are different, but these claws down here are the same. And then there's some different talons and things that are going to be on this armored carapace it looks like the tail has a different bit on the end and obviously the heads are the same so let's see what's similar about the build and what's not similar about the build and maybe a little bit more of uh, what we can do here so starting over here it looks like the legs themselves this is very similar to what we've seen in the past uh, where they put these little pinions on the side um, not too big of a deal but how this is sliced down the middle right here you're gonna have a pretty gnarly mold line or gap if you don't glue this right. So I can't say enough things about getting any really uh, super thin cement. This particular one's the Tamiya extra thin cement. And you know, there's a link to this in the descriptions and also the first comment that we've pinned at the top if you wanna get yourself some of that because this stuff's great. It brushes on, but believe it or not, there's a little tiny brush in here that you can use to get in all sorts of little areas, boom. And this stuff is, it's, I've been using it for years and years and years. Now, yeah, when you want to attach this base to the bottom, you probably want to use some normal super glue, but for just attaching the parts in the sides, this stuff is perfect because if you get a misalignment, you can pop it off. You're not set in stone. You're not gluing yourself to yourself. It won't react. It will work only with other plastic parts. Um, here, we kind of seen the tail and the upper thorax, I guess that's called. Uh, very similar build to the Carnifex of years past, uh, probably, I, I want to say circa 20, <laughs> uh, 2005. Gosh, it's been a while uh, since I put one of those guys together. But yeah, that's that looks to be about right. Very similar build. Uh, so they figured that one out for sure. This back carapace thing is a little weird. Um, it looks like, again, it's halvesy. So I definitely uh, want to, you know, use that super thin glue. And then it's got a little um, kind of locking bit in there. Um, and then the two different halves of the armor plating. So this is going to be a really interesting build of how this all goes together. And I hope it's super snug. And then the very tops of the spore stacks, bone thing, whatever that is, I don't ac actually know. Uh, it looks like those glue on separately. So there's kind of that. So then as we get kind of through this, it looks like it's going to have some front chest armor pieces. And that looks like that's all just going to go on there. And then it's got the space for the head itself. And then they're saying to glue this on to the top here you could keep it off i suppose just looking at it um but you know if you wanted to paint it separately it'd be some wacky stuff it's probably just better just to glue it on at that point um i'm not really sure why they're telling you to 
Blue bull. Oh, okay. So they're telling you to put the the tail and the upper thorax, and then the arm. Make the assembly with the legs first here. Okay, that makes sense. And then you're getting into these areas here. So I think this is where we need to start figuring out how we could make this a dual kit because I can already tell you there is an insert piece in here in this little area right here uh, for the claw that that is probably not the same as this claws back here so part 30 and 33 30 and 33 so that is an insert piece and that will be bigger so if you're going to want to make both versions out of this kit you're going to have to decide here if you want that insert or you're okay with just a kind of like a, a normal rending claw kind of look um you're also going to have to consider at this point depending on how the build and we'll know that here in a, a little while is your magnet situation because these are all different arms yeah you could glue this top one but these bottom ones are a little bit different. You got little Tyrannosaurus arms here, and you've got some bigger, uh, gnarlier arms here because they kind of make the size different. So these arms on this claw probably wouldn't even look that good to be quite honest because you'd have two ginormous claws. And at that point, it's like, you might as well just, I don't, I don't even know, I don't, I don't think it would look right. So, I mean, you could, and then you could use 1 8 inch magnets uh, to glue, to sock it into these areas here because I think there's gonna be enough material if you really wanted to judging by the recesses in here and you would almost want to do it at this point so you could go through and then you could use um, some Vallejo plastic putty to go ahead and well, I don't have it here but you could use some of your Vallejo plastic putty uh, to go ahead and lock in um, the backs here so the magnets wouldn't pop out and go into the, the crevasse here which is just going to be a big open hole that locks into this. Um, that's really a, kind of your call at that point, but I'm not sure that it would be worth magnetizing the arms. I feel like if you're gonna do anything, the, the thing that defines this kit is the head. So let's keep going and let's take a look at uh, the head if that is gonna be something that we can kind of switch out. So for the Norn Emissary itself, uh, they, this is the assembly here. So they're telling you, call, you put this hat together and then you put this like big dinosaur nugget uh, bony bit on top of here. And then it's got some jaw bits here and then a big uh, ginormous uh, rhinoceros tyranid horn on the front. And then that sockets into this area right here. And that's where it's going to be interesting because if that other bit just sockets in here for the head, we might... And, it, and it's snug enough, it might, this might be all you need to do to, to interchange, you know, these models. Uh, from there, they're telling you to uh, go ahead and assemble the base, which looks to be like a Lehman Rust chassis that's starting to get devoured and broken down at the molecular level. Uh, onto this uh, flower looking thing that's probably going to end up being a digestion pool or something and then to put up this little bit here now once you get to this part here i can't recommend enough and let's see if i have it handy yep i do this uh resin sand stuff is great and it's by liquitex and you just put this on the base and this is going to build up those areas around this so it doesn't just look like i glued a plastic piece to this plastic base and it's all flat and it doesn't make any sense you get some texture around there it doesn't shrink um, it's really great stuff and it'll make a nice little kind of transition between the plastic part and the bottom here. And you can texture it and dab it with all sorts of tools and things, but it won't be as stark, you know, between those areas right there as you start looking at that. Okay, so that's what this guy's going to look like. And then if we jump into this area here, it looks like it's the same build for the legs, the same build for the thorax. You don't have to worry about that. Same build for the back. There's no extra piece there. Same build for these uh, rib spires on the back. Same build for the front armor. Uh, that goes together the same. It looks like there's some little parts right here and I, I'm sure I just missed it in the, the future part, uh, the previous part, but it looks like that's how you line up where this nub um, goes over the front thorax. So then they have the smaller claws here that lock uh, together. The larger um, crazy looking three-handed claw thing and then this head, now this is where it gets different, well, besides the arms right there. So this looks to be a much smaller profile head. I think there's a cowl on the back that might completely line up, which we're about to find out. And it looks like you put the tongue in here, it's left and right half, and then you've got uh, this kind of Vegeta looking thing. Um, and then you've got uh, some claws on the side there. 
Ah, yes, there it is. So to differentiate this model, uh, you've got some flesh hooks that glue into the front rib cage area, and then you've got this armored cowl that goes on the back. And that looks like to just shut the socket in as well. So the thing that we need to find out is if these just will push fit kind of onto the top, maybe you use a little bit of blue tack and you can pop it off because you're not gonna be able to use magnets here. And then this head, these heads as well, um, you could build a superstructure, which I would definitely recommend to build a superstructure going across right there. And then you can just put a piece of blue tack on either way, depending on which head uh, you want at that point. Now onto the sprues. So this is uh, one of three equal size sprues here, but remember two of these together is one you know, larger size sprue or this is a squad size sprue, so to speak. So here you see the halves of basically everything except for the, the arms. Um, and for the most part, they, they got little nubs to lock into each other, which is kind of nice and something we hadn't really seen in a lot of kits before. And I was definitely digging that. Um, so like I said, Again, I know this is the third time I'm harping on this, but this will make your life easier <laughs> using glue like this. I mean, the stuff's great, and I love Monument Hobby stuff and any type of glue, but there's a time and a place for everything. And using that to glue down the base and glue the Norn Emissary to the base would be a great idea. But for all this, you can use that other stuff, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to save you a lot of time and effort, I feel like. So just try it. See, see what you think. Um, so all this should glue and lock in, so hopefully it doesn't split um, and have any issues there. But I mean, the detail on all this stuff is pretty incredible. And when you start looking at like the head right here and things like that, and all the little uh, tentacle whippy dude dads and you know big brain bug stuff right here, and uh, this crazy you know ginormous dinosaur horn thing right there, and I don't know, it's just it's, it's all very well done. And then this was kind of cool. Like they have this crazy detail of uh, like, it looks like it's a Lehman Rust. It's getting devoured or something. And, you know, re rendered into its basic components, uh, melted down by all the uh, whatever acid and spores and things. And that's obviously going to go on here. You get the flesh hooks. You get these crazy big bug arms that I don't even know what the heck those are. And then here's the cowl that's going to go over the, um, the other Norn variant. And then there's that one right there. So not too bad as far as like size and as far as piece count it's basically simple i mean if you're just going to put one version together this shouldn't take too long at all hopefully fingers crossed so we're going to go ahead and get building on this and see exactly how long it takes so here it is all built up uh we didn't do two versions of it but i did want to tell you um there's a couple things to point out on this model so like i said you're going to want to build a, a superstructure across there and you can do it when you're working on the interior cavity here uh, just get you a piece of the sprue cut it out put it across that hole so then that way the the head will sit on there and you can put a little piece of blue tack and pop this head on and off didn't have enough time to do it today for this one. Um, it's gonna be a little bit more uh, work than it was probably worth for us today, but it is definitely doable and I, I would recommend it because that's really the only thing at the end of the day that makes this model kind of what it is. And then everything else, I mean, you could kind of put the flush hooks on the front here, maybe one over here because this arm kind of goes to the side, but just kind of something to keep in mind there. Um, this, like all this areas right here that it's kind of hard to see, but you see where the cracks are and everything like that. Another really good reason to use that super thin glue on this model because that'll fill that in. And even if you miss it, you don't realize it and you go back and you're like, oh, oh dang, I need to go back and, and hit that up. Then you can do that uh, afterwards and it's super thin and it'll just fill it up before you hit this with primer. I mean, otherwise the model's great. I mean, you, you are able to pop the head down in there. Now, if you put that cowl piece on here, you're not going to be able to put this head on it. So the cowl you're going to have to leave separate, which means you're probably going to have to also put a dollop of um, blue tack right there behind it, put that head on there and then pull this one off and then put the other one on. But it is totally doable and I definitely recommend it. Um, we just had to get this done, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the thing is with these models, we purchase these from store shelves and it's the weekend and we're all tired and we all want to have our own weekend here at the studio as well. We don't get these things in, in advance to paint them all up and chill for Games Workshop, but we do like doing this because we can show you the alternate builds and so, show you ways to, 
to save money and things like that that I think are super important to this hobby or potential conversions and things uh, that's definitely worth looking out for. So I really enjoyed doing that. And this time, and there was great allocations to stores. So we could actually get this model where it's been a little rough lately as far as stores getting limited to two and three of things. So as far as posing, this is a very dynamic model. It's This thing's great. I really, really enjoy uh, this model and, and putting it together and getting to kind of look at this and, and see all the things and all the dynamic posing. You definitely want to use regular super glue here on these parts to get it in there. But the rest of it was just put together and another uh, advantage to using that you where things are like this. You're going to be able to fill that in with that super thin glue as well, which is uh, really, really good stuff. Size wise, like I said, 100 millimeter base. And then when you start comparing them to things like Angron, Angron, Angron's here. Uh, you really get an idea of his actual size. Some people say Angron's a little small, but I think he's he is smaller than his other Primarchs. But I think he looks just right, to be quite honest with you. I think he I think he uh, he he does a good job just kind of crouching there and getting ready to, to poise to strike uh, sort of deal. So definitely something uh, that will inspire awe. And there's your uh, your normal just uh, everyday Primaris Marine just uh, hanging out next to the uh, Norm Assimilator. <laughs> or the Norn em Emissary here. Uh, wow, that's uh, that's pretty that's pretty small. Pretty pretty small little guy right there once you start comparing it. So that gives you a definite idea of the size. Um, definitely comparable to the Avatar too for, for the Eldar. So very, very cool model. Um, I, I think, you know, they did a really good job with this and I can't wait to get some of the other Tyranids together uh, for this here, but we didn't have time to get them on video and I'm definitely keen to check out the Lictors because they, uh, they seem to be very, very cool and having a couple of those on the table doing the, the old uh, gotcha uh, would be really neat to see as well. So that is about it for this one. I hope you enjoyed our unbox and build of uh, the new Norn Emissary model and with our ideas on how you could make Make both kits out of here um there is no clear answer but i think i think we kind of nailed it and got really close on that one uh with the build there and just remember to uh, put that piece of rebar that piece of superstructure across right there um when you have this chest cavity open and uh, it's pretty much smooth sailing just pick whatever uh, claw claw arms you want there so that's it for this one thank you very much for watching uh this video here make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the first to like and follow all of videos. If you liked that video feature, consider supporting us over at patreon.com and get back in the mail each month a miniature crate full of some of the stuff we review here as well as some of the top 3D artist designs out there too to help support what they're doing. Plus discount coupon codes from some of those same manufacturers. They're yours to keep whether you cancel or stay on. Just it's totally up to you. Obviously we want to keep you as happy as possible. So check it out over at patreon.com forward slash spiky bits.